We've learned that the Emperor himself is personally overseeing the final stages of the construction of this Death Star. Many Bothans died to bring us this information. You've never heard of the Millennium Fault? Should I have? It's a ship that made the Kessel Run in less than 12 months. Hey everyone, and welcome to Kessel Run Weekly. My name is Danny. I'm Heather. And today we have a very special show for you. Um, something quite out of the ordinary <laughs> for us. Um, I will admit I'm a little nervous about, but we'll hey, we'll see. Um, so we got we actually posted out a uh, ask us anything um, on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all of our social media, um, and I, I'll. I was scared to see what kind of responses we would get almost because I really wasn't specific. But thank you guys for keeping it family friendly um, <laughs> and actually really interesting. Yes. Um, he- Heather was the one that thought of all the specifics and everything. And I was just like, hey, ask us something. And then I realized <laughs> the folly of my ways quickly, but it worked out. It worked it out the end for sure. It really did. <laughs> But yeah, I'm definitely excited. So we're, we're going to read you guys questions from uh, uh, Instagram and Facebook. Um, and obviously, shout out to the people who asked the question, because you guys are awesome for participating. We really appreciate it. Um, but our hope is that maybe you'll get to know us a little bit more um, and kind of what we like about Star Wars and what we don't like, maybe, and, and things like that. So without further ado, you ready to get started? I am. Let's do it. All right, so our first question um, comes from at Ahsoka Extano, uh, Michelle. Um, her question is, what are you most looking forward to in The Last Jedi? Heather, you want to start off? I am most looking forward to how Ray is going to revolutionize how people use the Force. That's what I'm looking forward to the most. Oh, but she's just another character. There's nothing so special far, about her. So far. I'm just teasing. <laughs> so far. Yeah. But that's that's my most looked for thing. Because I hope that something great comes out of there. And um, I hope that uh, Luke makes his way into society again and can forgive himself and everything. Oh, definitely, because uh, it does have, does definitely sound like in the trailer he's having a hard time, kind of a little down in the dumps. Um, so we shall see. And then the whole thing with uh, the time for the Jedi to end. Um, I mean, in all honesty, I'm looking forward to getting the answer to that quote because I've heard different things of, well, that's just the trailer. That that's your hook line, and that, that was probably a bigger conversation. Yeah, probably. At the same time, to even say that at all is huge. Um, right. Yeah. But I, I personally, I'm most looking forward to um, the answer to that line to find out what Luke actually means and if he truly does mean the end of the Jedi. Um, I want to know what he's found out to make him come to that conclusion. I want to know what's in those books. Yes, exactly. I want to know what's in those books. Um because apparently there's something good. And who knows? Maybe that's our segue into the Old Republic. Our first glimpse, officially. I would love. I would love that. Oh, yes. Because, <laughs> I mean, both of us are suckers for backstory. We are. Like, we love the lore of, of of just Star Wars in general. And to get a, a glimpse into thousands and thousands of years before our beloved characters actually take the stage, that's incredible. That would be so killer. Um, so, I mean, I'm, that's, I think that's what I'm most looking forward to for sure. I, uh, had a, we got another question Mm -hmm. and it's from Elizabeth Kennedy on Facebook. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Elizabeth. (laughs) And it says, who is your favorite Star Wars character and what stands out about that character that makes him, her, your favorite? That's loaded. <laughs> it is. It's a very loaded question. It, it's like picking who your favorite child is. Heather, can you do that on air now? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the fish. No. I'm <laughs> um, wow. So 
my favorite character, I've got a couple of them personally. Um, but my favorite character, I would have to say, uh, overall, uh, would probably have to be Anakin, uh, Anakin Skywalker. Um, I love his over arc, like his arc through the entire Clone Wars series. I mean, even into the prequels, seeing him as the selfless, um, just sweet little boy, uh, willing to give anything. He would have given the shirt off his back to Qui-Gon if he had asked. Um, and I mean, just seeing him come from that and all the pain and everything he had to deal with, the things that shaped him into who he became, um, it's just such a compelling story. He's such a compelling character. I know a lot would, uh, argue against that, but, um, I mean, I, I, I love Anakin. Uh, he, he, I, I relate to him in a lot of different ways. Um, I, I still think the Jedi did him wrong. They shouldn't have ever done that. They needed to really, if he truly was the chosen one and as powerful as they believe, which we've seen in the Clone Wars, quite powerful. Yes. <laughs> uh, quite powerful. Um, they should have brought him in on what was going on. They should have utilized him in the full capacity that they could have. Right. Um, so, yeah, I would have to go with my overall favorites, probably Anakin. My my honorable mention would have to be K2SO. I love K2SO. Yes. I love (laughs) K2SO. Congratulations. You're being rescued. (laughs) I love it. They had that playing at the uh, on tap, uh, the Star Wars kickoff party for uh, Magic, uh, the uh, Magic City Con that I went to. Yeah. Um, They had it playing in the uh, like the bar area. I was sitting there just enthralled with it the whole time. I love that movie. (laughs) But yes, Snarky K2. This is the first time I ever teared up with uh, the death of a robot. So, <laughs> I felt for the an- inanimate thing. Um, I would have to say that my top. <sighs> See, this is really hard for me because they're all <laughs> so close. Mm-hmm. But when you say my number one favorite character, the first face that pops into my head is Ewan McGregor. Ah, okay. So. Kenobi and then but it's not just prequel actor mm-hmm. type you know the way he acts I've read the books and seen the way we're going to get into another aspect of Mr. Mm-hmm. Kenobi soon that I'm oh, pretty sure. excited about but um, yeah just his his perseverance and his ability to bring sarcasm and um, humor into the most drastic situations. Mm-hmm. Um, and no matter what, he always tries to do the right thing. And he doesn't justify the wrong thing by trying to say that it was the right thing. He'll mm-hmm. say, no, you're right. I did the wrong thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, and it, it, he's a great Jedi, but he knew something was going on between Padme and Anakin and chose not to say anything. Mm-hmm. Um, he made a lot of choices that mm-hmm. were not very Jedi-like, you know, but, yeah. But he's still the most Jedi-like out of he all the is. Jedi. He is. <laughs> he's still the most Jedi-like out of all the Jedi, and... Mm-hmm. I love him for it. Oh, yeah. And then my second is probably Jen or so. Ah, okay. Why Jen? I like her broody. um, She's a survivalist. Mm -hmm. And um, as we will, I don't know when this is going to air compared to her episode. (laughs) Yeah. But um, she tends to keep her head down and move forward. But when something is presented to her that she can't deny, she can't deny it. Oh, yeah, definitely. And she fights tooth and nail to make sure that it happens. Mm -hmm. I like it. That's cool. I like Jen, too. Not a top, but I definitely like her. She's cool. (laughs) Um, Spinning out of that, actually. So we had kind of 
a question that kind of threw me for a loop <laughs> about um so uh, at te higgins 1503 um on instagram asked us to uh talk about the jedi sentinels uh the temple guard um so so we're not experts <laughs> in star wars <laughs> um but i mean uh, hey i like talking about star wars characters and star wars stuff and everything um what I do know about the Jedi Temple Guard, I don't know their origin or anything like that, but I know we've seen them in canon. So they are canon, uh, I guess, not really characters, but like a Jedi archetype. They're, they're, they are canon. Um, the Grand Inquisitor himself from Rebels was a Jedi Temple Guard at one point, um, which is kind of crazy that somebody entrusted to the entire safety of the temple and its contents could turn to the dark side so easily. So basically someone who kept kept it so close to heart and so personal could easily, or not, I mean, I guess we don't know if it was easily, but he could just turn to the dark side. So something big had to happen there for sure. Um, but what, what it kind of kind of like makes me think about is more of how you and I, how we've been talking about the what we would like the animated series to be after Rebels ends. Because we have Forces of Destiny, um, then Rebel Season 4 is coming soon, which I still haven't seen a release date on that. And it's it's breaking my heart. <laughs> the, the anticipation is killing me. Um, but after the Rebel Season 4, I mean, you and I have talked, I want to see an Old Republic uh, series of some kind. Yes. Uh, whether it be an anthology movie or an actual animated series, I think it'd be cool as an animated series. Because there's so much stuff to mine there. Like you're talking thousands and thousands of years of the Jedi and the Sith and the great wars and all that kind of stuff. Like that would be intense. I agree. I agree. And there's so much to go into, as you said, and I would like to see how the Jedi have evolved. Mm -hmm. If they have evolved. And if they have not evolved, which is what is insinuated in uh, Revenge of the Sith, mm -hmm. that's pretty much maybe why the Jedi might need to end. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I would love to see, you know, a little, you know, the first person that said, you know, if I use this anger and this hate, Mm -hmm. I'm going to be able to fry your heart. So, <laughs> yeah, let's do that. My fingers feel tingly. I wonder why. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or, uh, yeah, ooh. <laughs> like a Doctor Doom situation. Right. It's like, oh, that's that's interesting. I, I like, like that. That. <laughs> uh, that would be cool. Like, even seeing, because... Like, we've seen where, like, the Bindu and everything in Rebels, ha I mean, like, pretty much tells uh, Kanan that his view of the Force is very narrow. Um, it is. We've seen that a lot of times where you have um, them viewing it as light and dark, and it's split into two. Uh, even in the Mortis arc, they say that it's so much more, uh, that there's way more in it. Um, and I wonder if Luke finds that out as well in The Last Jedi. But to that point, though, um, I'd like to see the discovering of the force when it, when it split, w why did we decide to make it one way or the other? What happened? What did they just divide into sex and then they were done? Um, or what came about? Right. Um, because I mean, there's definitely different ways on either one, but as we've seen, even with some self-acclaimed Jedi, you can kind of walk the line without being one or the other almost. Right. Um, you can be more of a force wielder than picking a side one way or the other. Um, but I mean, it's the, does absolute power corrupt? Absolutely. <laughs> so I, I think that would be an interesting theme and an interesting story to really, to really go on. I think that'd be really, really cool. I do think that would be really cool. And uh, you saying that ha gave me a very weird an interesting idea for a story. So Ooh. mental note and moving on. <laughs> I like it. Well, cool. So did you want to read the next question? Yes. 
number four. Fox Rano. Is, did I say that right? I think so. Okay. <laughs> Fox Rano 19. Would you want a, a Clone Wars anthology movie? If so, would it just be clones or should a Jedi appear? I would love to see something like this personally. And oh, yeah. I do believe that Jedi should be involved, but sparingly. Mm -hmm. And only in, you know, I think that it should be truly focused on the clones. Mm -hmm. Definitely. There's a lot of story in the clones. Um, a, a lot of, because even though they're all the same, one thing that's really cool that they kind of bring out in the Clone Wars animated series is how different they really all are. Right. Um, like there's episodes where they find a traitor in their ranks. One of the clones becomes a traitor to the separatists. And, and, and so like they, they, may all have the same face, but at the same time, they all develop their own individuality, um, their own personalities, um, their own walk, talk, all that kind of stuff. They're all very different, um, which is really, really cool with them and everything. Um, I think it would trip me out a little bit to see an entire movie of the same actor over and over again. <laughs> I think that'd be kind of crazy to see, but I mean, I'm down. Like it would just be a huge war movie mostly. Um, and so I think that'd be cool. And I agree with you on the Jedi that they should definitely not be the forefront in a clone right. anthology. Um, almost kind of how with rogue one, you got Vader in about two scenes. Right. Kind of Even if you effect. never see a mm -hmm. lightsaber, even if you just mm -hmm. see a robe, <laughs> you yeah. know, and right. you, you or just... even a Jedi flying past you or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. But, um, an, another thing that would be an interesting thing would be their training regimen mm -hmm. before going to the Clone Wars. That's true. Because I know this says Clone Wars, but like the clones becoming an army of mm -hmm. one, you, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Seeing how the Kaminoans make them... A, a, a moving machine. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, um, I just think that that would be, I don't think it would be maybe necessarily two hours worth of a movie or anything, but. Well, yeah. And, and, and that's the thing, like he even, uh, the uh, person who uh, submitted the question even goes to compare it to like saving private Ryan kind of style. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was cool. Um, trying to evac their jet, the generals off the planet and everything. Um, I mean, I could see that. I really could. Really seeing that ground level, like even if it was just like a short story kind of form. Um, so, so fan filmmakers, listen, <laughs> let's make it happen. Yes. <laughs> but I think that would be really, really cool. Um, one of the uh, one of one fan film that I'd I'd watch um, in the early days of the show. Um, I can't remember exactly the name. It was TK something, but it was from a stormtrooper's point of view. And I thought that was the coolest thing because like you never think, and, and I've, I've talked to you about this question of morality and everything. You never think of the ones that were told to be the bad guys as possibly seeing themselves as true good guys. Like it's good people thinking they're doing the right thing, but in reality they're not. And so, but it's all just yeah, like a Obi-Wan says from a certain point of view. Yeah, but reality are we talking about? That's true. Yeah. So, yeah. But I mean, like, I mean, like Obi-Wan says, it's all from a certain point of view. So, I mean, who are the bad guys? To the Empire, the rebels are terrorists. To the rebels, the Empire is suppressing them, and uh, they're the bad guys. So, that could be something really cool to explore um, in the film as well, as far as because um, I think there was actually one Clone Wars episode where they explored that with the Separatists versus the Republic, where uh, Ahsoka actually goes and meets uh, a prince or a governor's son or something like that, someone her age um, who firmly believes that the Republic is wrong, um, that everything about them is wrong, and that they should be free and that's why they're succeeding from the Republic and all that kind of stuff. And why they're trying to fight for the galaxy. Um, so, I mean, it is from a different point of view. So, I mean, that could be 
It could be cool to explore for sure. Yeah. Cool, cool. So, let's see. So, that actually leads me into the next question we have. Um, we actually got from a uh, 501st cosplayer, uh, Commander Blackout. Um, he asks us, uh, who is the best clone commander? Um, now, I know you haven't quite seen all of Clone Wars. Not. You're working on it. <laughs> um, but I figured I could take this one a little bit because uh, as far as the commanders, like when I think commander, the first one that comes to my mind is most common is Cody, but he's not my favorite. I mean, technically, by what we see, he's the first one that gave into Order 66. So <laughs> it's not exactly like the best, uh, I would say. And even then, I've never really been impressed with Commander Cody. Like, he's good, and he's one of the elite. I'll, I'll give him that. But um, he's just never been my favorite. Um, but I would have to choose Commander Wolf. Um, the Wolf Pack, uh, Plo Koon's, uh small detachment. Um, I've always loved that. Because it, they were one of the first stories in the Clone Wars animated series. Um, and that's where they really bonded together and everything. Uh, but Plo Koon is awesome. Uh, Commander Wolf, even in Rebels, I, I love him with uh, Rex and Gregor. <laughs> it's the best. It's like <laughs> bro central. Yes. It's the greatest. <laughs> um, but, I, but yeah, I would say Commander Wolf is probably my favorite commander. Captain Rex being my favorite clone. But that's another story. <laughs> yes. I think I love now that you've told me who Wolf is, mm -hmm. I I did see that episode of, you know, Rebels, of course. I never saw him in the Clone Wars, so I can't say, you know, he just happens mm -hmm. to be the one that I'm most familiar with. So we got a question from Instagram by at Let Us Get Nerdy, um, our friends, Nerdy by Nature. And uh, they asked, how did you get immersed in this wonderful Star Wars culture? And where would you like to see this franchise progress toward in the future? I like it. Yes. <laughs> so you want to take this one first? or? Okay. So my first mm -hmm. experience with Star Wars, I was... I think I was 18 years old and I had my summer boyfriend said something about Star Wars and I just simply said that I'd never seen it and he quickly rectified that <laughs> and I was so afraid to be a nerd that I went, no, I will not like you <laughs> and then it wasn't until... I married the biggest nerd that there is <laughs> that, I, you know, I realized, yeah, you are a nerd and it's okay mm -hmm. <laughs> to be one. <laughs> and then I started uh, watching the movies over and over and over and over because that's what my family does that, you know, mm -hmm. and um, so that's where the immersion came in was actual literal immersion <laughs> and then I started reading like the book instead of just watching the movie and then with both of them in conjunction that's when I started to really follow up with the story oh yeah that's cool I don't think I knew that <laughs> that's cool uh, your, your uh, summer boyfriend story kind of sounds like what I did to my wife <laughs> <laughs> uh because she told me that she'd never seen star wars and i was like well we need to write this very yes, quickly very quickly um, and she didn't want to watch it because of like like you said she was she's just like oh no I'm, I'm, I'm not into that and everything and uh i actually failed on my first attempt to uh get her into it um because i made the grave mistake of showing her episode one first um, so i started at the wrong place I know I made a horrible mistake and I know that now, um, but she just felt lost and it wasn't anything that really gripped her. Uh, it wasn't until later um, where my dad had revenge of the Sith on because we, we have Sunday dinner and everything uh, at my parents. And uh, he had revenge of the Sith on, on in the background. And it was to the part where um, Obi-Wan and Anakin were having their final showdown. Right. And she was just glued to the screen the whole time. And she was like, wait, there, is that it? And I was like, nope, we got it. Five more movies. <laughs> uh, yep. <laughs> so she, had them, she had them already by the time uh, The Force Awakens came out. 
And so she's been caught up ever since. And we were, we're even going through Clone Wars and everything. But I mean, as far as how I got immersed in it, I mean, I grew up in it. Um, Star Trek, Star Wars, uh, Marvel, DC, like Saturday morning cartoons. Like that was my life as a kid. Um, I mean, Darkwing Duck, all that kind of stuff. Um, but I mean, as far as Star Wars goes, like, I mean, any chance that I could possibly get, I had them on the VHS. I really wish I still had those because I know that they were probably the unedited versions, but I don't know that for sure. <laughs> so I asked my dad the other day about it and yeah, we don't know where they're at. But anyways, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's just always been a part of my life, a part of my family. Um and I, I love it. It's, it's a way for me to get a chance to bond with my dad and, and my family. We all talk theories and we all talk about the upcoming movies and everything. And even if um, one or the other is not really as much into it, we still have fun talking about it. Um, at some point, I mean, for goodness sake, my dad built a live replica of BB-8. I mean, yeah, I know, right? I, I, I kind of I think that gives us our Star Wars card. <laughs> um but yeah, I mean, it's always been a part of my life. It still is now. Any chance I get to watch a Star Wars thing or read a Star Wars thing, um, I jump at the chance. I mean, doing a Star Wars podcast, uh, all that kind of stuff. Um, I mean, it's just, it's always been there. And I can't see it not being there, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but yeah. Well, I was a late bloomer, but what I lack in experience... I gain in passion. There you go. So. <laughs> and see, I would have not even known it if you hadn't have said that. So I most mean, people wouldn't. That's like my D and D and Doctor Who. Mm -hmm. Like Doctor Who, I watched as a kid and stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah. Well, cool. Um, so, where do we see the franchise going in the future? I see it exploding into branches of just enormity. Um, oh, I don't doubt it. I think that there's going to be a whole sections of Old Republic. I think there's going to be a whole sections of new canon made in all areas. Um, mm -hmm. I think Disney's going to grow it and grow it and grow it as far as they can. Oh, yeah, definitely. And it, there's so much there. So much there to go off of, and and not even in the way of already named characters and already created characters, but you can just create more. Spur off, like you said, spurring off of those stories, the stories on stories on stories. Um, like I mean, there's there's endless possibilities. Right. Like I, I really don't see the Disney machine stopping Star Wars anytime soon. I don't either. <laughs> I think gonna it, they're going just going to keep yeah. going. It's. I mean. You don't well oil a machine and then just turn it off. Right, exactly. Um, I was actually thinking about it the other day of because we got episode eight coming out and then there's episode nine. And obviously we have anthology movies in between. But what about episode 10? Where does it go from there? What happens then and everything? Because, you know, there's got to be. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, unless they find a way to close out the technically the Skywalker saga. But in all honesty, the way that they're going with uh, The Force Awakens, I, I think that we'll more so see a change in story um, to taking the focus off of the Skywalkers onto something bigger and even more meaningful and something new and different. Maybe they'll be full catastrophic gal galactic death. Oh, dang. At the well, very end of episode <laughs> nine, it's like never coming back. Right. right. And they all died. <laughs> and they all died. You went a rogue through one situation. <laughs> you went through forty years of <laughs> and it's over. Thanks for playing. <laughs> um, yeah, that would be heartbreaking. <laughs> so my question for you mm -hmm. what does Star Wars mean to you? Man, Star Wars to me. I mean, like I said, it's it's part of my daily life every day. I'm reading, watching, listening to even Star Wars something. Um, I absolutely love Star Wars. Um, but to me, like, it's helped me, uh, and I, I know we've talked about this a little bit in previous episodes, it's helped me overcome a lot of things in my life. Um, anywhere from when I used to have rheumatoid arthritis and couldn't get out of bed and kind of things like that, the do or do not, there is no try, 
you haven't seen that episode or listened to that episode, check it out. Um, but I mean, it, it's part of my daily life. I'm always thinking about the wise sayings of Master Yoda. I actually used "You'd be proud of me" um, the other night. I met a uh, Mandalorian merc um, at uh, the kickoff party. And uh, he was uh, cracking up and kind of making fun of the girlfriend he was with and just kind of goofing off. And he just kept going and going. And then uh, he was like, you know, I'm funny and everything. And I told him, I said, well, Qui-Gon said the ability to speak does not make you intelligent. Oh. And then he just, he, he literally, he literally looked at me and goes, uh, uh, I, was like, I was like, did I shake you up? <laughs> I was like, are you good? <laughs> I was, he had nothing to say. And I was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, just little things like that. Like I'm always quoting Star Wars. I mean, I can't see it not being a part of my life, um, and I'll, not a, and I can't see it not being a part of my family. I mean, my wife is in love with it now. Um, maybe not to the degree I am, but at the same time, I mean, I would consider us a Star Wars family. I mean, overall, my family is a Star Wars family, um, and so it's it's something that we all have common ground on, no matter what changes in our life, no matter what goes on in our lives or anything like that. It's a common ground that we can escape to and talk about and just have fun. That's the most important part makes us happy. So what about you? I, it means to me, the story, I read the story and it means that you don't have to be just one thing. You can be, a Jedi and a husband or, and yeah, it could go terribly, terribly wrong. <laughs> um, yeah. But that's usually because you made a very stupid decision and it, it shows also that if you institutionalize something, mm -hmm. it's, it might tend to go south. I mean, there's just a lot of, I mean, I know it's a galaxy far, far away, but I mean, there's truth in it, in a lot of it. Mm -hmm. and, Definitely. Uh, I like that. Absolutely. I completely agree with that. Um, and I love that even in the story of Star Wars, like, I, and I, it's interesting that you brought up the Jedi and husband because it's a string of choices. Yes. Um, Anakin didn't make one choice and then he was a Sith. Yeah. It was a series of bad choices. He had so many times and chances that he could have just turned back. And there that was, could have been it. That drives me nuts because everybody <laughs> always says, well, the only reason Annie mm -hmm. can ever turn dark was to save Padme. And no. But that is another <laughs> episode. And I think we've already done it. <laughs> I think I think we have. I think it's if the not, Anakin. If not, it'll be a new episode. Yes. <laughs> But I'm right there with you for sure. But yeah, but, I mean, I can't. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. But you you see that you could be the best person that you could possibly be over and over and over and over again mm -hmm. and still lose everything. Absolutely. It's, I mean, even, and I've seen some people argue that they're not relatable characters, but I mean, in all honesty, I feel like they're the most relatable. Like when Han Solo died in The Force Awakens, I, it hurt me. Because this was a character that I had grown up with from when I was a child. Like, I cannot remember a time in my early life that Han Solo wasn't there. I mean, I know right. it sounds kind of cheesy and weird to say, but at the same time, it was like, I mean, it's Han Solo. You don't expect for that to go away. Like, I mean, you got your TV series that, yeah, people are going to die. It happens. It's, it's a TV series. They're looking at the pool at you and everything. But for that to happen to a character that you've grown up with for... I mean, years. I mean, I'm 29. I mean, I've, it, I I have no time in my life where there was not Star Wars at some point. Right. Um, and so, I mean, that affected me. I was just like, man, like my wife kind of made fun of me. She's like, are you crying? I was like, shut up. <laughs> um, so, I mean, it, it, I, I, I'm very invested in the story and the characters and everything. And I mean, they're a part of my life for sure. I can't see how they could never not be. I think it's so cute because my whole family is mm -hmm. a Star Wars family. And, I mean, I was the last in line. Mm -hmm. But I have almost surpassed them <laughs> at this point. 
Yeah. And, um, you know, like, we will watch something and my uh, oldest was, said the other day, I wonder why they always have to fight and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I'm like, it's Star Wars. <laughs> it's the name of the show. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome yeah it's cute <laughs> but yeah so i don't think we had i think that was all of our questions it is. right that's all of our questions so cool so guys if you have any other questions i mean this is actually really fun yeah it was <laughs> I, I actually really enjoyed this this is really cool um see so if you have any other questions uh, that you want to ask us or want us, a topic that you want us to talk about uh send it to us um if you follow us on instagram facebook if you don't, you should. You <laughs> we're should. pretty in, we're pretty interesting, I think. Pretty cool. Uh, a little. <laughs> um, but I mean, yeah, you can follow us on Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, and now Tumblr. Um, that's a new thing yes. we're working on getting up and running. I'm um, trying as to well get as... something out every day. Absolutely. But I'm and, not uh, making any promises. <laughs> that's okay. A reblog at least every day. At least. Uh, we're, we're new to this Tumblr thing. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so if you have any suggestions or help, please send. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, Tumblr now, um, and our Snapchat. Uh, Heather's actually got some cool stuff coming up with uh, our Snapchat. You want to tell them about that? Well, I am. Snapchat is so confusing. But I'm trying to put up one because I make a lot of projects. I'm a crafter. Um, I recently made hot glue Millennium Falcons, which sounds really cheesy. But I promise you, at the end, they actually look pretty doggone good. Oh, so, yeah, they did. things like that get put on Snapchat. Um, when I dress my dog as a Jedi, that'll probably get put on snapchat it's not really it's just a bunch of silly my star wars life <laughs> and, and that's what's cool is i mean a glimpse into star wars life yeah daily life and it says danny and i'm sorry but i fixed <laughs> it and it won't let me fix it <laughs> so so if you see a snapchat from me guys it's okay it's i promise it, it's 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 heather yeah <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you can follow all of our social media things, including Snapchat uh, at Kessel Run Weekly. Um, so send us a like, follow, request, whatever the thing is for add, whatever respective thing. Added, add. you get added. Yes, add us on add Snapchat. Us. <laughs> um, so cool. And in if that was all crazy and a lot to take in, you can find it all on KesselRunWeekly.com. Um, we're making some updates to our website and trying some new things. Um, so bear with us. Um, if you see something you like, let us know. If you see something that looks a little funny, let us know. <laughs> We'd love to hear from you guys. And also, as an aside, uh, we want to let you know we're on iTunes and Google Play. So we can have harmony between the two opposing sides. Yes. <laughs> So if you're on Android, Google Play, if uh, you have an iPhone like 90% of the population, um, not us, uh, but <laughs> um, you can find us on iTunes. Um, and on each of those, you can leave us reviews um, and let us know if we're doing something you think is cool. Uh, if not, tell us how we can improve um, because we want to hang out with you guys. Um, I, again, we're not experts, but we like to think so. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but I mean, we, we like to have fun with this and we want to have fun with you. Um, this episode was great to make. It was a lot of fun. So it hopefully was. we'll have some more in the future for sure. Yes. So cool. So that's it. So until next time, guys, check us out at KesselRunWeekly.com. And I'm Danny. I'm Heather. And may the force be with you.